Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer and we're experiencing some awfully European weather here over the last few days. It just uh, doesn't stop raining, you know, and it's crazy how Jupiter and Scorpio hit us strong this time. You know, every time there is, I mean, not every time, but a lot of the times when record-breaking colds are set especially in the US but all over the world we have uh, uh, or at least all over the northern hemisphere we have a Jupiter in Scorpio period and I think that coupled with the Neptune in Pisces we're actually getting it very harshly this time and it's it's a desperate attempt as I see it it's a des desperate attempt by Gaia by Mother Earth to cool itself to cool itself to chill it's a cry out and it's a sad thing rain as tears let's not go there anyway <coughs> I've been under the weather as well as you can see I'm sorry but I'm here with the forecast nevertheless and we have a very interesting week in the heavens this time we have the last supermoon of 2018 it's also a blue moon and it's a blood moon it's a it's a lunar eclipse a total lunar eclipse it's going to be um, visible over the Pacific parts of Alaska Japan um, Australia New Zealand uh, unfortunately not in the US not over Europe um, over Europe it's going to be also in the afternoon or noon time so the visibility is going to be um, zilch to close to zilch but we still are affected by it we still are affected by it I want you to remember that the moon even physically we know that astrologically the moon is in charge over all our feminine aspects our intuition it's the sponge from which the objective experience of life in general is absorbed and becomes something subjective and personal. Something that we can identify with and can, that can grant us a feeling of familiarity that supports healthy um, emotional security and stability and comfort. So, the moon, of course, is, 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 is also attached to all the subjects of family, motherhood, and nurturing. And the past, and the inner child, and nostalgia, and our maternal lineage. But even physically, the moon by its gravitational force grips all the matter in earth on earth as it approaches as it comes closer and of course we're talking in a super moon that it comes to a state of perigee it, in which it's especially close to earth affecting greater tides and affecting of course any kind of matter on earth we can't see it on the rocks and on earth because it's static but we can certainly see it and everything that is fluid and I want you to remember that we ourselves are made up from about 70 to 75 78 percent water so even physically we are affected and we can feel our emotions bubbling <laughs> inside at this time and it's a time that Philosophically speaking, astrologically speaking, it's a time that we can change the lens, that we can change the filter in which we absorb from the outside world. There could be an inner change within us at this time. And what kind of inner change are we looking for? We're looking for an inner change. It, ha it is happening in Leo. So we, we're looking about an inner change in what we are doing in the outside world, in the light that we are radiating in the outside world, in what we are creating, in the signature that we are living 
in this world. And a, a few days later, the moon, that same moon, is going to be conjunct regulus, Corleonis, the heart of the lion, one of the four royal stars, guardian of the north, if I'm not mistaken. And again, bringing those Leo themes up. What is it that we are creating? Creativity connected with Leo. What is the imprint that we are leaving on this earth? We are living in this life. We are living on this children. Leo connects to children, fatherhood, and the paternal lineage. So what is, what is it in general that we are living for the next generations? And it's no wonder, to me at least, that this super moon, blood moon, blue moon, because it's a, a, it's a blue moon, because it's a, a second full moon in one month, doesn't happen a lot, so it's once in a blue moon came, came to be. But yes, it's a blue moon, it's a blood moon, it's, it's a super moon. What is it that we're leaving to our children and to their children? And that supermoon is conjunct Ceres, Demeter, the goddess of fertility and earth and nature and Gaia, really, you know? And that whole exchange between us and the natural system, the changing of the seasons, the peaking and the falling, the the hibernating and the springing. What is it in that discourse that provides us with better satisfaction? What is it that we love and what is it that we leave behind? So this is an important week. This is an important week in all of those reasons. I'm not going to go all through the days this time. Uh, there are some important days, though, that I want you to uh, look out for. The 28th and the 29th in the United States, the evenings could be a little dramatic. So there's an opposition to Pluto and another opposition uh, the night before that to a malefic. So just be more aware, be more rational, all you U.S. citizens on the 28th and the 29th in the evening time. And on the 3rd, no, I'm sorry, on the 2nd, again, evening time in the U.S., uh, we have a square to Mars as well. So again, a little rationality will go a long way forward. So that's about it. That's about what I wanted to talk to you about. And of course, I want you to know that I'm very grateful for your shares, comments, and and your likes and of course for any question you might have about astrology or if you want to study astrology I'm here and you can always contact me for any question you might have take care and have a beautiful week stay warm and dry bye bye <laughs>